Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, excess timber is going to come out of the forest in only two ways. Either we will carry it out or nature will burn it out. During the 20th century, U.S. foresters would mark off surplus timber every year. They'd auction it to logging companies who would then pay us to remove it. 25% of the revenues from the federal timber auctions went to the local governments affected, and the other 75% went back to the Forest Service to manage our lands. The result was healthy and resilient federal forests and thriving local economies. But then we passed the National Environmental Policy Act with the promise that it would improve the forest environment. Well, now simple forest thinning projects require an average of four and a half years of environmental studies, costing millions of dollars, more than the value of the timber. So instead of forest thinning projects making money for the federal government, they cost us money. So not much gets done. Uh, timber harvesting on federal lands in the Sierra has fallen 80% under NEPA, and the number of timber mills declined from 216 to 32. Without loggers carrying out excess timber, nature has returned to burn it out. California has done enormous damage to its economy by imposing the most draconian carbon restrictions in the country. Yet a joint study by UCLA and the University of Chicago recently documented that the carbon released from just one year of forest fires in California completely negated the entire carbon emissions reduced over 16 years combined. This is lunacy. When a law not only doesn't achieve its purpose, but becomes counterproductive to its purpose, it is long time to alter or abolish it, and that time is long overdue for, the, for, for NEPA. The categorical exclusion from NEPA that was originally contained in my HR 3382 was included in the WIN Act in 2016. That measure provided for a categorical exclusion from NEPA for forest thinning projects in the Tahoe Basin. It reduced the study time required by NEPA from four years down to less than four months, and the environmental reports from 800 pages down to a few dozen. Over the last five years, the Tahoe Basin Management Unit has increased the removal of excess timber from one to two million board feet a year to an average of nine million board feet under this authority, and the treated acreage in the Tahoe Basin has now tripled. As Mr. Veerkamp said, when the cholera fire hit one of these treated tracks, it laid down and was stopped before it could wipe out the city of South Lake Tahoe. The town of Grizzly Flats wasn't as fortunate because they weren't covered by this legislation. For decades, NEPA held up a similar treatment project that experts warned was absolutely essential to protect that town. The Trestle project was delayed so long that it couldn't be implemented by the time the Caldor fire utterly incinerated the entire town of Grizzly Flats. We desperately need to extend the categorical exemption from NEPA to all federal lands. My bill to do so in this session is awaiting hearing in this committee, and I hope that we'll see it on the floor without delay. Until then, we have this bill that would at least set time limits on environmental reviews to two years and limit the size of the studies to about 150 pages. After 50 years of experience with NEPA, the results are devastating. Entire communities wiped out by catastrophic fire, countless species habitats destroyed, millions of acres of forest laid waste. The environmental left promised us that NEPA would protect our forests. Instead, it's destroying them. Mr. Verkamp, what do you think would have happened to grizzly fats if the Forest Service had been able to complete the trestle project? It more than likely would have been easily defended. Uh, we have numerous abilities to fight wildland fire and defend uh, structures but there was just no way with all of that heavy fuel load that was present, that was targeted to be thinned, mitigated, and so forth, and more than likely would have been protected. How is it that, that privately held forests throughout the Sierra can be maintained at healthy densities while making money doing it, while federal lands directly adjacent to them have become morbidly overgrown and cost us money? Well, it's primarily due to the complications of the protection acts that were put into place to protect our environment and the consequences of them, best intentions, but the consequences have turned totally negative and, and we're seeing that annually now. And again, we're taking care of uh, lots of other works for protection and wiping them out as well as polluting our environment tremendously as you alluded to in your study, as I did to the UCLA study. 
Should we extend a categorical exclusion throughout the federal lands? Absolutely. It, it, it has to be done because, again, there's enough other protections and avenues to, into the way we do things today that the, the lands will be protected and the environment will be, the consequences will be good. And we just have gotten on the other side of that. So absolutely, yes. And we can we can certainly do better. And there's sam there's examples of those projects occurring today because of categorical exclusions or other ways to do it that they've they've figured out. Now on our private lands, we have some as well up in the Sierra Nevadas. We don't have to abide by some of these things, and we go in with a massacator or proper thinning methods and take care of the land so our cattle can graze, and so forth. Which, at a minimum, our easements, our roadways, our critical infrastructure. Our watersheds, 50% of our watersheds in the country originate on public land. They have to be protected, not incinerated. 